For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello, you're watching today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. Israeli forces demolish Al Sariya home in Sheikh Jarrah. Hundreds of social workers are on strike in Georgia. Rights groups demand release of Bahraini political prisoner. And trial of digital rights activist Ola Bini begins. In our first story, Israeli occupation forces destroyed the home of Sheikh Jarrah's Al Saliya family on January 19th. As per local reports, hundreds of Israeli police officers, including counter terrorism and riot units, descended on the area around 3 am local time. The electricity to the house was cut off and tear gas canisters were thrown. Occupation forces then attacked the family and arrested five people. 22 Palestinian activists who had been holding a vigil on the property were also arrested. Journalists were barred from the area and ambulances were denied access to the injured. After hours of barricading the area, Israeli forces began demolishing two structures of the home. Israeli forces had first arrived in the neighborhood on January 17th. However, the family had climbed on top of the roof and threatened to burn themselves and the home. They had bought the house in Sheikh Jarrah in the 1950s after being displaced from West Jerusalem during the 1948 Nakba. The demolition has been condemned as a war crime by Human Rights Watch. At the same time, Palestinian activists are drawing attention to the ongoing violence in the Al-Nakab or Negev Desert. Bedouins have been protesting land theft and expulsions by Israeli forces for over a week. Legal group Adala has stated that over 150 people have been arrested so far. Around one third of them are children. Police are repeatedly trying to renew the detentions without conducting any investigations. Adala has also argued that these arrests are illegal. Israeli forces have used rubber-coated steel bullets and drones carrying tear gas against protesters. We now go to Georgia where nearly 400 public employees are on strike for better wages and working conditions. Organized by the Solidarity Network Trade Union, workers at the government social service agency walked out on January 17th. They are demanding a 100% increase in salaries and the abolition of one-month contracts. Workers have stated that their wages have remained stagnant since 2007, even as prices have risen. The demands also include paid maternity leave and the equalization of salaries between Tbilisi and other regions. Now in its third day, the strike has impacted social service centers across the country. The action follows months of negotiations with the Ministry of Health. In September 2020, 246 workers submitted an 11-point petition to the government. Key demands included the reimbursement of work-related travel expenses, health insurance and a collective labour agreement. They also demanded a fixed salary for social workers and an increase in the amount. The social service agency was also the subject of an investigation by the Labour Inspectorate. It found several labour rights violations, including the use of the illegal one-month contracts. The Georgia Fair Labour Platform has stated that the agency has failed to rectify these conditions. On January 13th this year, 309 employees submitted a written notice of their intention to strike. On January 16th, the agency unilaterally announced a hike of 40-60% to 60 in the social workers' wages. However, the workers have rejected this measure as inadequate. We now go to Bahrain where 27 international and country rights groups have renewed their appeal for the release of Dr. Abdul Jalil al singhes The prominent opposition figure has been in prison for over 10 years. He was among the 13 activists arrested and sentenced for their role in the 2011 uprising. In a letter addressed to the US Secretary of State, Rights groups also stated that Dr. al Singhez has been on hunger strike for over 190 days. He began his protest in July 2021 against the confiscation of his academic research on Bahraini culture. He escalated his hunger strike in November after officials arbitrarily suspended weekly video calls with his family. He is already suffering from serious ailments including post-polio syndrome and tremors. Despite spending a majority of the past six months in a hospital, he has not received proper medical care. Prior to his arrest, Dr. al Singhez was a prominent member of the Shia opposition Haq movement. He was sentenced to life imprisonment on charges including setting up terror groups to topple the regime. A Bahrain Independent Commission of Enquiry report had detailed the extensive torture of political prisoners in 2011. Dr. al Singhez was subjected to nightly beatings for two months while in solitary confinement. His crutches were confiscated and he was threatened with and subjected to sexual abuse. Rights groups have now called upon the US to act on the human rights commitments in their foreign policy. The former Trump administration officially removed human rights considerations from arms sales to Bahrain in 2017. And for our final story, the trial against Swedish programmer and digital rights activist Ola Bini has begun in Ecuador. The proceedings have resumed after being suspended in October 2021 and will last three days. Ola Bini has been accused of non-consensual or unauthorized access to a computer, telematic or telecommunication system. Ecuadorian prosecutors have claimed that he tried to access information related to the oil company Petro Ecuador 
and the former National Intelligence Secretariat. He was detained at the Quito airport in April 2019, just hours after the arrest of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. The Ecuadorian government claimed that the two had supposedly conspired to commit cyber crimes. Bini was released 70 days later after a habeas corpus petition found that his arrest was illegal. The presiding judge was also recused after his defence pointed to political interference by the then Lenin Moreno administration. The pretrial process was finally concluded in June 2021. However, a second presiding judge was removed over allegations of procedural fraud. Bini's defence team has listed at least 65 violations of due process in the case so far. This includes last-minute changes in charges, repeated delays and documented harassment and surveillance. Ola Bini's lawyers have also argued that the case against him lacks any solid evidence. His arrest was deemed arbitrary by experts from the UN and the OAS in 2019. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, watch our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.